And welcome back to Open Studio. I'm Steve Leahy. So this is it. This is the final episode of the Harley painting. We have now named it Generations and um, I wanted to do something a little bit different for this last episode. Uh, this Open Studio has been amazing for me. I've had a lot of fun doing this and the whole idea behind it was that you guys are with me for every single second and that's really what happened with the painting from the moment I opened it up till the final framing. But with the framing I wanted to kind of do something a little bit different. I could have done half hour episodes and it would have added another I don't know, 10 to 15 episodes onto this series. And I don't necessarily think it needs that. The open studio is more about the painting, but I still wanted to show you how I go about framing. So this last episode, the finale episode, is a little bit longer, but it encompasses everything that I did to get this guy framed. And this is how it came out. So this is, ooh, a lot of glare. <laughs> Let's see if we can do this so we don't get as much glare. And that, there we go. Uh, so that is how the painting came out all together. So if you want to see how I got this framed and button up this version of the open studio, the Harley painting or Generations, uh, stick with me and uh, let's get to it. So our first trip is to Lisbon, Ohio. Lisbon's a great little town. I found it uh, from a friend of mine, actually. There's a great gallery in town called the Source Gallery. So Keith introduced me to the owner of the Source Gallery and uh, we talked for a little while and it turned out that my work was going to work out really great there. So Mark Hamilton is the owner and he not only has a gallery but he also does a lot of framing. So that was great. So what I did was I brought my image down to him and we went through a bunch of frame options for it, kind of told him what I was looking for and he went through those options with me and we came out with some um, really good ideas until we finally landed on the one that was going to work for us. All right, so here is the frame from Source Gallery. And I'm super, super excited about this. So this is the frame that we picked out for the Harley painting. So to give you a little bit of context, this is the original frame that I got for this series of paintings. Uh, and there's a long story behind this. They were cut wrong. Um, so they're not the right size. They were supposed to be five by seven, which is why all these paintings are a weird size. Uh, it's kind of how that happened. Instead of reordering the custom frames, I just cut down the panels and that's where all this came from. But this was the original vibe for this. And as this painting went on, I was like, there's no way. There's no way that this, this painting, after what it's been, kind of, you know, how long it took to do, what it is, it, I just needed a better frame for it. So, like I, like I said, we ended up going with, with this much larger, more vintage frame. And then what I've done <clears throat> to kind of set that off, this is a 040 aluminum panel. And what I've done, and I should have included this in the video, but I wasn't really thinking. I was just kind of trying to get it done fast. But I've gold leafed, I used 23 karat gold leaf all around the outside edge of this panel. And what's going to happen is I'm going to mount that on the back, which looks like this. And it's just a piece of board just a you know regular compressed MDF and or MDO I can't I can't remember which one is which but anyway it's a, a thin piece of you know this compressed wood what I've done is I've sprayed the background with a matte black and this is um it's going to use illustration the illustration matte black because it's so good but um this isn't going to have glass on it so I needed something that I, uh, was going to be a little bit tougher. So I ended up going with just some regular spray can black, uh, some Rust-Oleum actually. So I sprayed that matte black and then I applied another little block in the middle of this. And that's going to be my, my kind of spacer. So let me show you where this is going. And then what I'll do is <clears throat> I'll show you the individual pieces as I put them together. So this is just a black piece of paper that I used to make sure that I wanted matte black. You know, just kind of a test run. So what's going to happen is, and I'll show you the dry fit here, this is the back and of course the back is going to just fit into the frame like this. And then what I'll end up doing is I got to decide, you know, the spacing on this. So there is some room to move around. See the, the depth in here? So I can put a spacer in to push this back if I don't want the painting like right 
on the surface. So what I'm going to do to test that is I'm going to just grab this roll of double-sided tape. And what that's going to do is that's just going to hold the backing right up against the frame so I can see what it's going to look like pushed all the way forward. If I don't like it, if I want a little bit of depth, I can add a spacer on the inside of this and that'll give me a little bit of depth. So this panel is going to be attached here and I'll do that with the double stick tape that I just had. But I'm, <clears throat> I want to do the dry fit first and then we'll, once we're sold, we'll do everything else. And then this guy here, the painting itself is going to be just double sided taped to this panel. Now there is a step that needs to happen here. And this is why I lay it all out first. So this gold in this frame is a little bit kind of antiqued. It's got a kind of a brownish black streak that, that kind of was applied to it, which tones it down a little bit. So this 23 carat is, is completely brilliant. It's gold and it's two gold. So what I want to do is I want to match this to this. And that's this is one of the things that you can kind of see when you dry fit everything to make sure everything is going well. This painting here is getting the same kind of treatment. I'm trying to decide what color to do this background, but uh, it's going to be mounted the same way. So this gives me a chance to just see them and kind of work it out. But now you kind of get the effect on what this is going to look like ultimately, <clears throat> which I'm I'm really really happy with. I contemplated putting glass in here, um, but there isn't enough room in this frame. This frame has a a very deep profile so that, that what that translates to is there's not a whole lot of room inside the frame <clears throat> so I'd need some thickness to include like the the back the the gold outline the painting itself and the glass and space between there's just not enough room for glass I would love to put glass in this but that's not gonna happen on this one so um, as far as where it's sitting I kind of like it <clears throat> the alternative again is to put a spacer oops sorry knocking everything around is to put a spacer in the in the frame which will pull it off the background a little bit like that um yeah i don't know oh, i don't think it makes that much of a difference it does you know it will introduce a gap around the inside which again, ideally glass would take care of that because, you know, dust and stuff is going to get down in there. But uh, I think I may end up just going flat. So there's no odd shadow up there. But anyway, that's why we dry fit it so we can kind of figure that stuff out. All right, let's get to getting this. And I got to do the same thing for this one. This has the same patina to it. The gold 20, the 24 carat is just to, <clears throat> oops grabbing everything here. The 24 carat on this one is just too bright. It's close, but it's just too bright. <clears throat> so I'm going to use the same, what's, what it's going to be is burnt umber and black. And it's going to be just a, well, let's go look. Okay, here is the gold leafed panel. And again, this is just 040 aluminum, powder coated black on one side. And then this is 23 karat gold leaf put on this. But again, this is, this is beautiful, but it's way too bright for what we're going for, which is this more antiqued gold, which is like on this frame. So basically what I got to do is I have to kind of look at this, figure out what they did to this gold here and make that look like roughly the same. It doesn't have to be perfect, but essentially I just have to kind of take some of the shine off of this one. So what I'm looking at when I look at this, and I actually have two of these to do. There's a different frame that also needs, or a different panel that needs the same kind of, uh, kind of application of paint. What it looks like is they just um, streaked over this gold with some like a really dark burnt umber and it's streaky. That's how it's like lines on this gold. That's how they get the tone. I'm not going to do that on this because there's not enough. You can't see it enough. So all I'm going to do is just use the burnt umber and just tint this just a little bit. All right, so let's get to it. So in order to get this done, there's going to be two two colors and then one additive. So I'm going to use opaque black and burnt umber to get this done. And this is detail burnt umber and opaque wicked jet black. Uh, so what I do, I use this color a lot. <clears throat> if you've watched the, any of the feeds, um, you would have heard this. So I'm from New England. So we drop all our R's off of everything. So I've named this color wicked blumber <laughs> or wicked blumber. And um, basically what it is, it's black and umber 
but there's a you know a, a bigger quantity of black than burnt umber in it, so it gives it just a really really warm, deep deep brown color. Uh, there is no formula for this really. I suppose I should work out something. I mix this like my Italian mom makes tomato sauce. Um, it's just a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and that's how I kind of come out with the color. Uh, and what I also have here to check out the color is this little just piece of paper that I've cut a little rectangular window out of and this is what I'm going to use to kind of block off the the area so that I can see what it looks like because again this is super subtle this isn't going to take a lot of paint at all now the relief of the the painting the painting only you only shows about that much you know it's just about a I don't know like an eighth maybe an eighth of an inch maybe more like a sixteenth or like three sixteenths or something uh, just it's not a lot so I have all this gold to kind of mess around with on the inside to make sure I get the color right before I actually go ahead and spray the whole thing <clears throat> so first off is you got to mix this up so I'm going to start with is one of these little clear mixing cups and I use these a lot they're nice because if you use water-based paints or even solvent based paints so I bounce back and forth between these small really small wax free paper cups which are really neat to mix paint in uh, and then the nice thing about these is you just let them dry and then you can throw them out Again, if you're looking to kind of recycle and reuse a little bit, you would think that the plastic ones really, you know, don't make a whole lot of sense, but they really do. So you can rinse these out and uh, keep reusing them over and over again. Um, obviously, when you need to dispose of them, you got to throw them in the recycle. But other than that, it's uh, it's fun. You know, it works real well. So I'm going to take a little bit of this pre-mixed paint, and it's going to come out looking very black. But you'll see it when I kind of thin it out. So I'll put about three or four drops actually put a bunch in here yeah so we're gonna I'm gonna need a bunch of it to kind of make up to paint this whole thing so yeah actually let's mix up a good amount of it because I don't mind getting rid of this if it doesn't if I don't use all of it so there's a bunch of it at the bottom of the cup and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take oh I should just use transparent sealer yeah I was gonna use 4050 UVLS 4050 which is great, but this is um, the Autoborn sealer, the transparent sealer. So it's the Autoborn sealer, but just no color in it. It's just the base of that. This stuff is incredibly strong. And uh, also it's nice because it's clear as well. So with this, I'm gonna add a bunch of this. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna make this mix much more transparent. And that's what I want. The candies are really transparent and I, I, I don't wanna, I'm afraid that if I use the transparents, it's going to change this to like more of a, a brownish color where the black and the little, the opaque black and this will kind of cover the gold a little bit and give it that antique look, not just like it's, yeah, it looks really, really good. I mixed way too much of this. <laughs> That's okay. All right, and now that I'm starting to kind of mess with it, you can, if I hold it up the right way, just against the gold, you can see that brown, the brown in it. So it's a really just a deep, deep brown. That is wonderful. Yeah, I did mix, mix up way too much. That's okay. <clears throat> okay. So that's that. Now I do have to reduce this a lot to get this to spray the way I wanted to, but that's okay too. Again, that's why I, I know that I mix way, way, way too much of this because... I probably, once I reduce it, will have about three ounces of this stuff, which is, it's going to be good to get both of these done with, but, um, but yeah. So what we'll do is next up, we'll take some reducer. So I've got the Micron C here and take some reducer here. A little bit too much. No, actually it wasn't. Some reducer on the bottom. And then I'm just going to use the paintbrush and take out just a, you know, about, I'd say that's about three, three or four drops of this color and mix this in really, really well. So what this does is give me a really, really transparent brownish color, but because I've got that transparent sealer in it, it basically returns the strength of the paint that I've removed by reducing it. That's what happens when you reduce this stuff a lot. It just doesn't stick as well it doesn't have the same binders in it anymore so by adding that transparent sealer it does two things it makes it more transparent which is what i want and it also helps it spray through the small brush this is really really right on the money okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a little test 
and I'm going to do it on the inside here just so I can see it before I go and commit to spraying this everywhere because I want to kind of get a feel for what this is going to look like. Get the spraying and then just really lightly go over it and see what I got to do to this. Um, I always err on the side of, I get it, err on the side. I always err on the side of too light first. I'd rather be too light and then have to strengthen it up a little bit than put this in and have it be too too dark because too dark especially in this instance it just you have to mix more paint because you have to add transparent sealer to it and then reducer so if it's too light that's okay I just add a little bit more paint to it so we're going to go over this a few times and then I'm going to pull this off and see what it looks like so here's the thing with this and this is why you do test panels here zoom in Okay, so what it's doing is it's changing the color, but it's also removing the sheen. See how the gold now where I sprayed, it's not shiny at all. And I don't like that. Um, and this is this is not again, this is why we do this. We you know try this out so we see what ha happens before you actually commit to it. Um, yeah, that really deadens the shine of the paint. It changes the color to what I want it to but it really takes away all that shine. And that's really common with gold leaf because again, this is 23 karat gold leaf. It's just gold right on the surface. And if you put anything on it, a clear coat or you know, like I did here with even transparent paint, it will remove that, that amazing gold luster that it has. So here's what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna cut my losses because I'd rather have the shiny gold than the color match. Um, you know what I mean? So I, I can have one or the other here. Um, it, I, I, uh, let's say, hmm. no, I'm not going to go for it. I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm not going to mess with it because I have way more transparent sealer here than paint. So what it's doing is it's the sealer or the clear that's deadening that shine. And that's not what I want. I don't want that at all. Um, because what will happen is if I spray the whole thing with this, it's just going to look like you know, gold paint. It's not going to look like gold leaf anymore. And I'd rather have the shine of the gold. All right, so that's it. So that makes it easy on this one and the other one. I'm just going to leave them as, as regular gold, and it is what it is. All right. Now, while I was waiting for the frame, I was talking back and forth with Mark at Source Gallery, and he was talking to me about the glass, and I was telling him how the frame wasn't thick enough for the glass, and it was really kind of something that I wanted to get in, the frame, the glass, and he said, well, why don't you just build up the back of the frame? And I'm like, that's a great idea. I just, I didn't even occur to me. So what I ended up doing was taking some more of that, uh, some more, taking some of that MDF board and cutting cutting pieces so that I could basically make the back of the frame thicker, you know, add thickness to the back of that frame. So I ended up adding three eighths of an inch onto the back and it's super clean. It looks really nice. The, the edges are painted and it worked out really, really good. And that gave me enough room for the glass. So I just wanted to throw out a big thank you to Mark for giving me the advice I needed for this frame to really make it the way I wanted it to. Okay, I was so excited. I almost went on without you guys. All right, so I got the glass from Source Gallery, which is the same place that I got the frame from. And I got a big sheet of glass, which is great because I was almost out of this museum glass. You can see the, the um, reflection of the light above, but it's like that green color. So that's, um, this glass is museum glass. So it's got UV coating on it and it's reflection control and it's amazing stuff. Um, it isn't cheap, but it's totally worth it, especially on a piece that you really, really care about and want the best of the best for it. So yeah, it's made by True View. It's really cool stuff. So I cut, I cut the sheet uh, to size and then I dropped it in and then I'm, I was in the middle of putting it all together. I'm like, we got to do a video. So here's what it is. So what I've done is once the glass is in, you need something to hold the glass in place because the painting will be on the back side of this, like almost level with the, with the, uh, the back of the frame. So you need something to hold the glass forward. The best way I found is to use spacer strips instead of, you know, you could, you could use an adhesive to glue the glass, but I don't know if, if you get any glue anywhere other than on that, you know, inside edge right in there, 
it, you'll never get it off, especially on this glass. This glass is great, but if I put my fingerprint on it, it's just, you have to use glass cleaner, you know, like the eyeglass cleaner or, you know, something specific. I think it's non-ammonia, if I'm right. Uh, non-ammonia glass cleaner, but it's just, you don't want to get fingerprints on it. So anyway, or anything else. So the, the liner is really great because it's just basically pieces of foam. And what I do is I take a piece of black foam core. This is just eighth inch foam core. And then I cut the strips so that they are the right height to get me to the, you know, the, where I want the, the painting to sit. And then I just use a double sided tape. I like 3M or does it scotch? Scotch or 3M? Either one. So use this tape gun. It's got double sided, you know, just like glue type tape. Run it along that like that. Just run it right along. And then I've cut all these to shape. I've already got three of them in. Like I said, I was a little excited and started going without you. And then you just kind of put these in up against the glass and then press firmly. I like to wear gloves with this too, this part, because again, I don't want to get fingerprints on the glass. It's not catastrophic, but it, again, it's just extra work I don't want to do. So push that down really firm. And with that last piece in, now the glass is in this frame. It's not going anywhere. That's what it looks like. Sorry, the camera's kind of fuzzy right here. Um, but I'll, I'll fix it on the next one. The next step is to get the artwork in and then, uh, and then we'll put the hanging hardware on this. So, um, I want to make sure this has nothing in it because when I seal this up, I don't have to reopen it. So I just want to make sure the inside has got no smudges or fingerprints or dust or anything from any of this. So just kind of, I'm just using a, this my the glove, which is a soft cotton cloth really and that just gets everything out and i'm purposely even though i'm not looking at it i am looking at it but what i'm doing is i'm even just kind of wiping where there is nothing there because i want any loose little bits from like the saw edge or whatever uh the cut marks on the foam board or whatever i want anything that's going to eventually fall off to come off right now i want that nice and clean on the inside now there isn't a top to the and bottom to this frame i don't think and it would just be visual, you know, like if there's something that I want on the top and the bottom. But this is, um, no, this is pretty much good all around. So here's our painting. And what I've done here is the, again, the painting is put on a gold leaf panel, which is a small, uh, thin piece of aluminum, which is gold leafed. Then that is uh, mounted with double stick tape to uh, the backer, which is just regular fiberboard. And I also spray painted this black with Krylon matte black. I used the Krylon originally. I think I, I think I've already said it, but I'll say it again. Um, I use the Krylon because originally this was going to be open, and I didn't want anything to happen to it. So the Krylon is super durable. But uh, same thing. I don't want any dust, any any you know weirdness on this at all. So just kind of make sure it's nice and clean. I probably shouldn't be doing this over this because I've already cleaned that. Drop this in. Now, I did make a mistake when I was doing the doing when I was adding depth to this frame. So I had to add, like I said, I had to add depth to the frame so that the the painting didn't touch the glass. And uh, when I did that, what I should have done, I measured incorrectly. I measured from the op edge of the op like the edge of the opening where it rolls over. So there is a gap around this right now, which is which is not great because um because you know normally when it's perfectly square and, and the right size you just drop it in and it's done right but now that there's a gap around this i got to make sure this painting is right in the middle even gap around the whole thing if not that's not going to be centered in the frame so i need to check that first so i'm going to just kind of line this up so it's even all the way around like that and then I have to check this so in order to check this here's what I'm going to do I'm going to take some this is just FBS tape you could use literally any tape on this <clears throat> but FBF is what I got right here and I'm going to tape that in place so I got to flip it over to see it and obviously I can't have this move from where I have it right now because if this is right then I can uh, I can put the the, uh, the clips in and we're good to go so I'm just going to tape the whole thing in. Again, I don't want this to move at all. So 
and then we're going to check it. Again, you know, normally I don't have to do all this because if it's cut right, I just drop it in and it's done. But again, I don't know what I was thinking. So let me take a look at this. The other thing I can do now too, like I see a little, I don't know if I can get it to pick up. There it is right there. I see a little fingerprint. I got to make sure that's on the outside. So what I do to clean this, and you can't see this because I'm going to burn up to my face, but <laughs> the best way to do it is you just breathe on it and, and then you just wipe it off. That's the, the first line of defense before you start spraying anything on it. Okay, and take a look again. And no, I think that's on the inside. All right. All right, so I'm not going to like bore you with every single second of what's about to happen <laughs> but what happens now actually so so far like if that's centered and I, it is centered in the in the frame and i like that so that's that's the the first thing the second thing is the nitpicky stuff of making sure like i said there's no there's nothing on the inside of this thing before i seal it up because once it's sealed it's difficult to reopen and tell i i'm telling you i've done it more times than i can count you get this whole thing framed up the backing dust covers on it the wires on it it's ready to go and you look and you see a fingerprint or a piece of dust on the inside that is a complete drag because i have to unassemble the whole frame i have to not you know take the rails apart but take the whole back off pull it all apart and get that out so i want to make sure that that's done first the only thing is is like i said it's kind of nitpicky because it's just back and forth you know trying to get you know trying to get all these things out so i'm not going to bore you with that just um just, you know, I showed you kind of how I did it and get the fingerprints and the dust out. So when we come back on the next, well, when the next clip in a second, um, it'll all be ready and I can put the clips in. Artwork is all in. It's all straight. It's all clean. You notice I have a little bit less tape on here because I kept having to remove the tape to, you know, get it the inside to get all the dust and fingerprints off and everything. So um, I had all that tape on there. This is much easier. Just, you know, put a little bit more tape. Um, also, this isn't quite square, so when I first lined it up and it was totally even all the way around, it was a little bit off when I flipped it around. So, um, so that's, you know, you kind of look at it, sit back, make sure it's straight, and then, you know, do your adjustments or whatever, and you're ready to go. Okay, so what I have here, these are glazing points, and these, if, you, if you've lived in an older house and have glass windows, I uh, never had to replace a window. Uh, this is what holds the glass in before you put the caulking around the around to seal it up. So these just kind of dig into the wood and the flat part holds the glass in. So it's essentially the same thing for this here. Uh, it's going to hold the back in for me. Now, these ones have these little tabs that stick up. Normally, I'll get the little triangular flat ones. Or if you've got a frame from, you know, like a craft store or whatever, it'll just be a... Do I have one? I do. I happen to have one because I just took these out of another frame, but they, they usually look like this. They're real little, you know, thin pieces of metal and they just stick in. So this just kind of holds things together. All right, but I had to bend these tabs down because on a window situation, it would work really well. It drives into the wood and then this holds the glass. But that, if I do that on these, if I stick it in, you know, here, those little tabs are going to stick up on the outside of the dust jacket. So I just took a pair of pliers <clears throat> and bent them all down, bent them all flat. All right, with the tape in place, because I know that's in, in the right spot, you just kind of pick a few spots. I'm going to pick thirds maybe. And then you do this with a screwdriver. Now, normally this is really easy with these tabs because you have those, I mean, really easy to push in because you have those tabs, but I've kind of taken those tabs out by squishing them down. So I'm going to have to kind of really be careful. And when you do this, you don't, you, the temp, temptation is to want to hold your piece here and push with the screwdriver here. But I think you can see the problem here. If this slips off of here, which it will, because they always do, you're going to jab your hand with the screwdriver. So just remember, you know, I mean, it's something my dad taught me early on. Continue the motion of, of where the tool is going compared to how you're using it. And then that works true with, with X-Acto knives. If you're cutting with an X-Acto knife and you're doing something like this, continue that cut and see where that's going to go when it slips. And, you know, if you keep that in mind, you'll always keep your parts away from, you know, getting jammed. So for this, I want to make sure I'm lined up. And then I want to hold it, obviously, in a place where if the screwdriver slips, it's not going to hurt me. Now, I haven't done any of these yet so i don't know how strong this wood is this mdf 
Usually MDF is really easy to push into, but this might be a challenge. And it's also right on the edge, so I gotta be super careful that it doesn't rise up like that, which this one did a little bit, but that's still good. Okay, so again, keeping the tape in place because I really wanna make sure that this holds. Let me show this is kinda, maybe I'll flip them upside down so they're aimed down, so they dig more in going down. Might be a better idea. There we go. And then just give that a little push. Now, obviously, you want to leave some of the metal to hold in the board. The other thing I'm thinking, too, that gap bugs me. That gap bugs me a lot. So here's here's my here's what I'm thinking. So this is all fine. I could put, you know, a hundred of these clips in and it would hold the back end but all it would take is one good jolt down and there's a chance that the image would you know this gap would close and, and then the painting won't be centered i feel like i need a piece of um a piece of board in here to make sure that happen doesn't happen the sides are okay because they're really there's not a lot of room there I mean, I could just kind of put a, a safety in there, which wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah, let's do this. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to break here. I'm going to cut small pieces of uh, mat board, a thin piece for here, definitely, because, you know, just jostling, you know, I don't want that to shift down. So that'll stop that from happening. And then I'm going to cut very, like, shorter pieces for up in here, because all I need is, like, one piece on either side, basically where the tape is. Um, and that'll, that'll keep this from moving around once, once I get it done. So let's, let's go on the side of, you know, being safe. All right, let me cut those. I'll be right back. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So I grabbed just a little bit more of the foam board, cut these little strips, and these are going to do the job for me. So there's one in here and I don't have to worry about, you know, gluing these in or anything because basically all they got to do is be there. The other thing is too, there's extra double stick tape on the, on the, um, spacers so they're going to hold them in as well so these bigger gaps i cut foam board for and they just sit right in there and i cut them to fit obviously exactly so that they'll fit right in there because again we don't want this to shift around and then for the top and the bottom i'm going to wait to do these until i get a couple clips in um, so that way we make sure nothing moves because i don't want to take all the tape off and then be jostling this thing around all right so let's continue on with the clips i'll put um, i'll finish putting this one in and then um, I'll break because you don't need to watch the entire process. That's if I can find my screwdriver. Oh, it's literally right in front of me. All right. I just want to kind of get this in far enough so that the metal, so it's in solid in the wood and then the clip is holding, holding the, uh, the board. I'm gonna go extra because extra is always good. I'm gonna aim down a little bit on this one since I'm kind of near the edge more. So if I aim down a little bit with this before I get it started, there we go. So aim down a little bit and that way I can get it in and then I can bend the clip onto the panel. So that's gonna give me a nice, nice secure fit. All right, let me get the rest of these clips in and then we'll go on to the next step. Clips are in. So I put in more clips than I needed, but again, I really want this to be like solid. I don't want this to move anywhere. So putting a few extra clips in uh, doesn't hurt. And you can see now that I've got the, you just barely see them. I've got the spacers in between everything. So even if this, I mean, if this frame takes a huge hit, you know, like if it drops down on the bottom of it here, um, you're gonna damage the frame probably before this would have moved with the clips in without the spacers, but the spacers now guarantee that this thing's going to stay exactly the way it is. And, um, and I don't want to take a chance, you know, it's like my good buddy, Chris Arpin says it's cheap insurance, you know, a couple of pieces of foam board. All right. So before I put the dust jacket and wire this thing, I want to take one last look, make sure we got nothing on the inside. I shouldn't be touching this with my finger, but um, so these little bits of dust here, I want to make sure all these are on the outside. There is one little tiny speck right there, but it's not really worth. Here's the thing. 
unless you work in a completely dust free environment, which is ideal, obviously for doing stuff like this, th there's dust floating around. You're going to get something somewhere. So there has to be a moment for me where I'm like, all right, there's a little a tiny, you know, fleck of dust in there. Do I take this whole thing apart and, and get that out? And then as soon as I do that, put it all back together and then some other little piece of dust gets in there. So there's a moment where I got to say, okay, you know, that's what it is. And that's this little guy right down here is going to be permanently part of the collection. But it looks really good. I'm happy. There are no fingerprints. Fingerprints I would not live with. You know, if I there was if I found a like a smudge, I'd I'd have to take it apart because that's that's just not acceptable. But uh, you know, little piece of dust is okay. All right, well, looks good. All right, so the dust jacket is next. I like to with a lot of the black and white frames. I use a black dust jacket. I think it looks really classy. Unfortunately, I realized too late that I don't have a piece of black paper that's big enough to cover this. So I'm going to go with the traditional, more traditional craft paper, um, which all this does is this does exactly what it's supposed to do. It keeps dust from getting into the frame from here. It's difficult for dust to get in through here because there's so much stuff going on, but still, again, you don't want to take a chance. Plus it cleans up the frame, makes it look nice, even though it's the back and we're good. So I'm going to put, make sure this doesn't move, I'm going to put two strips of double stick tape again this is overkill one would certainly do it this stuff here uh, this tape that I use it is um, it's really good stuff now you notice I'm also not going right to the edge um, the reason for that is because I don't want any of the glue the tape to be sticking out on the outside edge I'd rather have a little bit of, you know, that dust jacket not adhe... I was just going to say adhesed. That's not a word. Um, I, if the very edge of this dust jacket isn't exactly stuck down, it's not going to make a difference. You know what I mean? All right. So obviously this paper comes rolled up, which is very convenient. I've cut it larger than I need, which is good. So I start at the bottom and stick it down and then... When I go to roll this out, I'm rolling it out. I've learned this the hard way. I roll, I'm, I'm pushing it down on the frame rails. The tendency is to like run all the way across this thing, but the board is a little bit lower. So what I found was when I do that sometimes, if I'm pushing down here in the middle, uh, sometimes because I'm pushing it down, it gets wonky. And then when you come back to the top out on the rail, it makes it all wrinkly. And my OCD doesn't like that. My OCD likes it when it's nice and flat. All right, so I'm creasing down the outside edge so I can see where that is because the next part is going to be to trim this. Um, I can also say from experience, for me, this is way easier than cutting it to size and then trying to line this up and getting it getting it on there. Um, I always like misalign it or it gets crazy. This way, you're going to cut it, so it's going to be perfect, you know, in one shot. And it's much easier to put the put the, uh, the the backing on the dust jacket when you don't have to worry about it being absolutely perfect. Now there is a really great tool for the next part that I'm going to do here, but I don't have one, and I should just go out and buy one. And what it is is it's a it's a little plastic um, holder, and it's got a little knife blade in it. And what happens is you just put it up against the outside edge of this, the plastic part, and then the knife edge cuts this perfect line about an eighth of an inch in. And uh, like I said, I should just grab one, but every time, you know, I, I just forget to do it, you know. I mean, and this is super simple. You don't need that tool, but if you do, oh, as I screw this up. If you if you have, if you do a lot of framing, um, it's a great tool to have because it makes this part super easy. All right, so I'm coming in about, like I said, about an eighth of an inch off that outside edge. Maybe a little less. But just enough so that it's, and you can see what I mean, like that, the double stick tape doesn't come to the very edge of that, but that's, that's nailed down. So it's not going in there. All right. Let's do this. And obviously I, I crease that so I can see it. You know, it may helps me line up the ruler really nicely. I'm not guessing. Okay. That's like the the frosting on the cake. 
All right, now, super, super important. Like right now, I don't know where the top is on this. So luckily I haven't done it, but I could totally see myself doing it. You go and measure down, drill the holes for the wire, screw them in there, and then realize you flip it over, and that's the bottom of the painting. <laughs> that would suck. So always flip the painting over, or image, or whatever, even your photograph, whatever you're framing, to make sure you know what side is the top after all this jostling around. The other really good idea too, like I have this nice cutting mat here that's clean. Uh, if you're going to be doing this a lot, you want to avoid like rotating the, the frame on the surface you're working on. You're just going to scratch up the top. So a good idea to do is uh, grab an old towel and just put it down and then put the frame on the towel. That way, if you're moving it, you're not going to scratch the front of it. Again, I have a nice clean um, cutting mat, which works well for this. But again, even on this, I don't want to spin this thing uh, on the cutting mat because I'll end up damaging it. All right, grab my pencil here. Um, so there's a general rule for where the wire goes, and that's about a third of the way down. So this is 15 inches. Um, I usually come up a little bit from that just to make sure, especially on the smaller ones. So a third would be at the five inch mark, but I'm going to put this at the four inch mark. That's just a nice spot for it. So um, too high and you'll see it. You know, if you put it way up here, you know, the, if the hook is or the wire is way up here, you're going to see the hook uh, too low and then the, the, the painting won't hang right. So you want it about at the third and you can make minor adjustments from there. So we're going to go there, we're four inches for both. And then I need hangers. Which I have here, so here are the, the little D-rings. And then I want screws for that. And that's good. We're so these, again, you want, this is nice, this frame rail is huge, meaning, you know, it's really thick this way. So I have a lot of room to decide where I want to put this. Uh, you just don't want it to show, and you don't want it so close to the edge that, you know, it'll it'll damage the, um, you know, it'll, it'll split through or whatever. So I'm going to go about a quarter of an inch in. Let me show them on that line. Yeah, this frame is nice. You can tell by the wood. Okay, again, quarter of an inch in, because I don't want this to show. Always drill pilot holes, even if it's softer wood. You know, you could, if this is like a fiberboard frame, like this one here, which I'm working on. So this is a fiberboard frame which means it's not, it's, you know, it's composite wood. You could, you could drive a screw right through this without drilling a hole, but it's just, it's so much better when you drill the pilot holes because everything goes together cleaner and you don't stress the wood out at all. All right, so we'll get these on here. Even now, even after saying that, I'm still super paranoid that this is the bottom. <laughs> all right, I need my screwdriver. This thing is magnetized, so it's not helping much. There we go. The screwdriver is magnetized, so everything's sticking to it, which is good, and it's bad sometimes. This pile of could have been a little bit bigger. I could use the bigger bit, but this will work. Yeah, there's no way I could have just driven the screw into this. I had to have put a pilot hole in that. There's no way. Um, normally I'm using smaller screws on the smaller paintings, but this screw is a little bit bigger, so I had the bit in there for the smaller screw. But like I said, it works. The good news is these screws are never going to come out. <laughs> yeah, that's a tight fit. Obviously, you know, you want to, again, you know, it's, it's tool 101. You want to think about where the tool is going to go. If it slips, now obviously I don't want to jab myself with the screwdriver, but I also don't want it to slip off and damage the frame either. So, so we double check this one last time. It is the top. Thank goodness. Okay, wiring. Wiring is fine. My framing wire here. Wire cutters. And, um, and again, I, you know, I can't say it enough. Tool, having good tools in general isn't a good idea. Um, but especially if you use them a lot. Um, so a good pair of wire cutters um, will do a great job. A cheap pair of wire cutters will make a mess. So they're not overly expensive. So another wire itself. 
This is coated wire. It's got a coated plastic on it. I like this the best because it doesn't fray. It doesn't tarnish. It's just, it always looks good. Uh, and then I have a general weight. This is right in the middle. This is size four. So for everything that I use, I get the weight, the weight like total for the size four wire, but it, it's got to be at least, you know, 50 pounds. Um, I'm doing this really fast. I'm not showing you. So I'll show you on the next one. Um, actually, I'll zoom in so you'll see it. There's a cool framers knot, I guess, that you use to do this. And I just blasted this one, but I'll show you close on the other one. Again, this is, you know, you could just tie this on here and be done. I love it when it's really cool, like when it looks really good on the front and the back. All right, let's get you guys closer and um, I'll show you this framers knot. Okay, so the framer's knot works like this. First, let me cut this off a little bit. We don't need the whole spool here. Cut this. And if, oh, if you were curious, those little holes on the side of the spool, that's for keeping your wire from going everywhere when you're not using the spool. Cool, huh? All right, wiring. So what you do with this is you come from underneath first, and I'm trying not to bump the camera. So underneath first, like this. And then on the second one, I've already got the other one on, so I can do this. But I, I pull this pretty, or as tight as I can. So pull it really tight, and then wrap this over. Now it's wire, so it's got memory. So you don't have to hold it tight, really super tight all the time. Once you get that, you know, that turn in it, it's going to kind of hold itself. I mean, you want to keep some pressure on it, but you don't have to, like, you know, crank the thing. All right, so the next, next move for this is it's underneath but on the opposite side of the way you came. So, I mean, it's the only way to go underneath, I guess, but you get the idea. So you come underneath like this, and then you pull it back like this, nice and tight, and then up. So you go underneath the wire, back up, and then over the loop like that. Got it? And then the next step, as you probably see coming, is you go back into the loop, and you want to stay on the lower, this, this side of the wire, and sometimes I hold it. I'll try not to hold it so you can see what's going on here. But if you hold it nice and tight, it keeps everything nice and nice, and, you know, well, nice and tight, I guess. There we go. So there you go. So now you're on this side. Okay. So now what you want to do is take the wire and you start wrapping up and over. So over, and you'll see it happen. So you kind of tighten this up and then you wrap it over and then you just start wrapping it one after another. Like this and this gives it that I mean like I said this is designed to obviously hold hold the knot in place but when you're done it's super clean looking it's really nice and if you do this enough you know you'll get really fast at it I don't know you can put as many wraps as you want on it it doesn't really matter I mean it does in the beginning because you want at least three or four wraps so it doesn't come undone but that's how it looks. It's super clean and that's ridiculously strong. The wire has to break before that, that that's gonna go. So there you go. Next part is just gonna be kind of the finishing touches on this, which makes me so happy. So bumpers, super important. So these little rubber bumpers that go at the bottom, they keep the frame off the wall, allows air to get behind there and keeps everything happy. Keeps the wall from getting marked up too, for the most part. Not really, though, because the wire does a good job at marking the wall up, but this keeps the bottom of the frame off, keeps the air going. So that's the first part. The second part is branding. So I got my business card here, and just put a couple pieces of, well, three of well, tape on my business card. That lines up at the bottom. And then I sign and date these two. Uh, I don't have the right pen here. Okay, brand, brand new Sharpies. Love it. I love new Sharpie day. I use a lot of these. I use a lot of these. I use a lot of these and I use a lot of the ultra fine ones too. I wish they would, um, I know they have different sizes. This is going to be a little personal soapbox gripe. So this is the fine point, but to me, this is the regular one. This is the one everyone uses. So this should be the medium point. And then the super small one, wherever it is, I got a bunch of them. This one's ultra fine. This one should be fine point. 
Oh, well. <laughs> All right. And then the final thing, because this has UV glass on it, and I want to make sure whoever owns this knows that, uh, this true view glass comes with a, uh, the the sticker to instruct people on how to take care of it. And it's also just adds a level of coolness to it that it's, you know, it's museum glass because that's a big deal. All right. Ready? 2004. Ugh. There we go. So there is Generations. It's all framed and ready to go. So this is our last episode for open studio for this painting. It's been an, just an amazing, fun journey. I'm so glad you guys got to hang with me on, on an epic painting, meaning a, a painting that took me a, a long time. And this one, I think we're up at about 35 hours for the painting. Uh, and then the framing and all that fun stuff is, is on top of that. Uh, but you guys were there from the moment I took this ampersand panel out of the package to the final framing. It's all done. And uh, this hopefully will go on to uh, be in shows and then end up in someone's collection. It will be something that's really important to them. So, all right. So thank you for this series. Keep an eye out for the rest of the series. You know, there's always a new painting going on in Open Studio. Uh, some are not as epic as this one, but that makes it fun. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and you can do what these lovely people have done and support the channel. Uh, it means a lot to me. But again, just the freeway is is unbelievable, which is just liking, subscribing, and then leave me a comment and tell me what you think, what I can do better here, uh, what you'd like to see, and, uh, and that would make me very, very happy. All right. So for Steve Leahy and Open Studio and the Painting Generations, I will see you guys on the next one.